Uh, cool. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Vanessa. So we thought that there, there were there were a few people that that may not know about the about the OED. So just a a very quick elevator speech. So the the International Astronomical Union set up the Office of Astronomy for Development back in back in 2011. And uh, you know the main the main mandate is to use astronomy in whatever way possible to well make the world a better place. And so the major activities that we're involved in, uh, uh, one is in terms of structure, we have 11 regional offices around the world. Uh, um, uh, and these offices focus on a geographic or language region uh, and look at how to further astronomy for development there. And then we have an annual call for proposals and we funded like over, over 200 projects so far around the world. So my virtual background is sort of whole bunch of projects that <laughs> That are funded, uh, uh, that have been funded, um, and the idea is that we look at uh, uh, ideas from anyone anywhere in the world on how to use astronomy to impact on their on their communities, on society, um, and then they they come in with these proposals, and we 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 provide some seed funding, uh, and if something works out, if something looks really cool, then we can look at uh, uh, expanding these into a larger sort of flagship project. And at the moment, we have three flagship projects, one dealing with a sort of astro-tourism and, uh, uh, and the economic impact of astronomy, the second dealing with astronomy, uh, astronomy's inspirational aspect, and that's uh, involving this subject of mental health, and the third is about the knowledge and skills of astronomy for development. That's OED in a nutshell. Thanks. Thanks very much, uh, Kevin. And so in order to um, achieve some of these aspirations and goals, we have a number of people who work at the OED sort of full time, but we also have a number of uh, fellows who pass through and contribute specific um, specific skills. And so two of those fellows that will that are leading this uh, project around astronomy for mental health uh, is Armine Patatanyan, um, who will talk to us first. And then um, we have also Sandra Benitez Herrera, who will speak to us second. Um, so without uh, any more fuss, I'm going to hand over to Armine. You're welcome to share your screen and uh, warm us up. Yes, uh, thank you, Vanessa. Hello, everyone. Um, we are very happy uh, to share with you some of the work uh, that has been done uh, in OED's Astronomy for Mental Health project. And we are very happy to uh, see you here and hear about your work or your thoughts and ideas. Um, I am Armine and I'm remote fellow in OED, uh, currently based in Armenia. Um, I will start quickly by sharing uh, some of the context that we, we are working on. If you can hear me, I will proceed. We can hear you fine. Okay, thank you. So as, um, yeah, Astronomy for Mental Health Project aims to explore how these uh, inspirational and cultural aspects of astronomy can help improve the mental well-being of uh, particularly vulnerable communities. And so far, we have exploring some of the we have been exploring some of the topics. Um, in particular, why is mental health important for development? And where is mental health now on the development agenda? So, what is the impact of COVID pandemic on mental health? And also some aspects of the role of astronomy uh, to help improve mental health of people. So yes, my background is in human rights. I would like to start with, with this aspect uh, that mental health is our fundamental human right as much as our physical health. And uh, even maybe more because in fact, it is widely accepted that there is no health without mental health. And it is a key aspect of health, but also it is a key aspect for realizing our human potential and being able to contribute to other people, the community, to the world. So, and unfortunately, um, close to 1 million people are live with mental disorders, ranging from highly prevalent depression, anxiety, or to other severe forms of mental disorders. 
And here, uh, the figure on the right can give a quick overview of the statistics. Uh, this is the figure um, before the pandemic, but still it gives some idea what are the more prevalent mental health disorders and how they are prevalent across the age group, across male and female population. So you can see here that particularly young people in their young adults in late 20s and their 30s are particularly vulnerable and women have more ten like have prevalence in mental health, health disorders. So this is a highly invisible problem, but in fact, one in five adults is reported to have some sort of mental health problem. And uh, unfortunately, there is very limited access to mental health care across the world that makes this problem even more um, severe. And uh, unfortunately also people, uh, for many cases, they themselves do not know that they have mental health uh, problems unless a certain event happens in their life and they seek support and they are diagnosed. But um, irrespective of the fact that we know about it or not, it impacts uh, our quality of life and particularly our overall health, but also it deprives people from different opportunities such education, employment, building social relationships and key aspects of development. And uh, yeah, it, is, it has been reported that mental health problems are linked to other diseases and they, in, in cases, they lead to poverty, they lead to many sufferings. And this makes this topic um, on top of the development agenda. And um, we also have seen that mental health is very much linked to suicide cases. Um, but as suicide is a severe form of self-harm, we also should note that there are also other, like most law, but um, uh, the self-harm method that cause long-term suffering for people. Yeah. Unfortunate, fortunately, yes, uh, this topic, um, after a long struggle, it has been included on the development agenda and it is part of the sustainable development goal number number three, which is good health and well-being. And it's um, target 3.4. It's a long sentence uh, about the non-communicable diseases, but its second part talks about the promotion of mental health and well-being. And uh, this goal will be calculated by uh, suicide mortality rate. And as we have spoken, we have seen that uh, mental health actually relates to almost all aspects of person's life. So, and in fact, it is cross cutting across these development goals. And that's why the initiative that was mainly uh, struggling to include mental health on the development agenda, it was called fundamental, considering the role of mental health for yeah. development. So when we look from development perspective, we are also looking for the ways uh, how to measure the impact of our interventions. And uh, that we have seen that um, on, from development perspective, mental health um, and the progress is calculated by suicide mortality rate. But also there are other ways to measure uh, the improvement of mental health. Uh, for example, the subjective well-being has been a lot used as a term, which is uh, in fact self-evaluation of the life of people. And it includes the life satisfaction and the emotions and also uh, meaning and purpose aspects. So if you are interested, you can uh, follow the Sustainable Development Goal Report, which was released in 2021. And um, in this link, you also can see uh, the profiles of different countries and where they are in terms of the subjective well-being of their population. And also this is the recently released World Happiness Report, which also discusses some aspects of mental health, particularly as a result of COVID pandemic. Yeah, when it comes to the pandemic, uh, it should be noted that yeah, the recent scientific release uh, stressed um, how 
uh, the pandemic affected the mental health, especially the, the increase of prevalence in anxiety and depression during the first year of the pandemic, it has increased by 25%. Um, but it is uh, just the tip of the iceberg as the WHO says. And uh, yeah, and because uh, the pandemic itself and also all the restrictions have caused many challenges for people, um, we, we are already talking about the mental health pandemic. And this is kind of wake up call to pay more attention to this problem. And we have seen there are some particular vulnerable groups uh, that they were vulnerable before the pandemic, but now they are even more in a more um, vulnerable situation. So in this project also, we are trying to work with them and to understand how astronomy can be useful for their mental well-being. So in this map, you can see how the prevalence of um, depression has increased across the world uh, as a result of pandemic in the first year. So here are dark red countries are the countries who have seen the great increase of prevalence of depression. Um, yeah, and now linking to the topic of astronomy, we have also been looking at one of one of the groups that we consider to work with and refugees and and actually to highlight how astronomy is very much relevant uh, for refugees. So we see that uh, refugees are people who go lots of through lots of problems and challenges. And uh, in fact, it starts in their home country, but it kind of never ends because they are going through different traumas even when they are in uh, host communities. So it is reported they, that refugees go through, like they experience six or more traumas, high majority of them, and this causes high levels of stress, fear, anxiety, other problems. And we see that the prevalence of mental health disorders is very high among this population. And in fact, it is reported that uh, these disorders are kind of around 30%, but there are some reports that, that say that uh, anxiety, depression, and especially post-traumatic stress disorder can reach to up to 45% of population, which is, uh, which is a lot. Uh, but also on the other side, uh, the mental health community has uh, stressed that um, we should avoid over-pathologizing um, this community because these problems are a natural consequence of the traumas that they experience. And they have stressed that it's rather more important to focus on building resilience and strength. And there are studies done across the world that in fact say that there are some factors that help refugees go through the crisis and they improve their mental health. And these factors are education, employment and networks that they build the language they speak, but also across the world, the studies show that uh, there are certain coping mechanisms for relevant for different cultures that in fact are useful for mental health. These being um, social support mechanisms, spiritual practices, cultural practices, different hobbies, recreational activities, shared learning activities, and in fact, that early intervention with these activities proves to have uh, better results in mental health. And on the other side, when there are no early interventions with these kind of activities, the mental health of refugee population decreases dramatically. So, and there are other methods also, such as positive thinking, distraction mechanisms, um, which, which we see that they are highly relevant uh, to the tools that astronomy has uh, that can benefit this group. So yeah, we consider that the toolbox of astronomy is quite rich. It includes learning activities. It includes methods to bring people together, the foster cultural identity. It includes methods to create safe places like astronomy clubs where people gather and they have their joint hobbies. 
And also we have seen how inspirational stargazing activities can be. So having said this, uh, we see that astronomy is quite relevant and it has this um, different, maybe say coping mechanism that can be useful in terms of mental health. So we hope for this and we would like to hear your, your opinion and your thoughts about this as well. So I would like to stop here and uh, let my colleague Sandra uh, take you through the more specific solutions and the role of astronomy for this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Armina, uh, for this wonderful introduction. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen. Uh, give me just one second. Um, Okay, should now work. Please let me know if you are able to see my slides. Um, yeah, we can see it now. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so hello everybody, and thank you so much for joining uh, this session today. Uh, my name is Sandra Benitez, and I'm also an OED a remote fellow working in this project. Um, and I wanted to now focus a little bit more on what are the general benefits that astronomy can bring uh, for mental health and also present solutions um, that are already happening, uh, projects, initiatives that are already taking place uh, where they are taking some of these elements that uh, Armina just presented to us and they are actually uh, already getting uh, very important and informative results. Uh, so as you all probably have experienced uh, contemplating a starry sky or looking at the moon, the planets through a telescope, even looking at some wonderful images of uh, uh, telescopes and uh, spaceship missions, um, it's very impactful and produces uh, some kind of emotion that responds to these grand stimuli. And this is what we call awe. And this uh, usually happens when you are experiencing or looking at something that transcends your accustomed frame of reference. And of course, astronomy is not the only source of awe. There are many others, but this is a very important one. On the other hand, many of the activities that are involved within the broad scope of astronomy are uh, happening in natural places. places. Um, and there are um, behavioral studies showing a strong correlation between being exposed to natural settings and recovering from different uh, mental health symptoms like stress, anxiety, fatigue. Um, so this is what in, in relation with astronomy is what is called dark nature. So this is also an important aspect of astronomy that is happening inside nature in dark nature. Um, there are also pilot studies actually showing that star gazers report feeling uh, emotionally more connected to the, national, to the natural world, but also to other people, to peers, uh, when participating in night sky observations, they report a rise of positive and transcendent emotions. They report relaxation. They report even personal growth, so self-esteem increasing, and also in general, an enhancement in quality of life. So these are all very important aspects to take care uh, or take into account for mental health. Um, so again, a book of fol uh, following what uh, Mine was saying, um, these positive uh, benefits um, related to astronomy can empower individuals or communities that are afflicted by deep trauma. Um, and I will show you just some cases in a minute. So what we are, or what hypothesis that we actually want to discuss among all of us and, and also try to somehow measure is that astronomy can actually make a difference. It can make a difference in the proper symptoms of mental health problems like anxiety, stress, negative feelings, depression. It can help with self-esteem and help with the coping mechanisms that Armina was also mentioning. Um, of course, astronomy can give hope and inspiration, which we see is essential for uh, as a coping mechanism also when you are deeply afflicted by some kind of mental health uh, uh, struggle. 
Um, so astronomy is a very important source of hope and inspiration. And it makes, it makes you feel connected to people, which is also a very important aspect to overcome mental health problems. So astronomy actually combines all these different aspects uh, that we think are very important and that can play an important role. And so I can just, I want to just uh, show you a few examples. And I want to start uh, with an example um, that is uh, uh, designed to support uh, refugees. This is um, a project called Amanar Under the Same Sky. It's funded by the OED because actually the OED has been already funding uh, many initiatives that address somehow directly or uh, indirectly uh, these issues with mental health. Um, regarding this uh, refugee population, these are the Sahrawi community, and they are actually the population that have been in the longest refused condition in the world. So since the 70s, they are living in refugee camps. And as you can imagine, they face many different challenges, starting with humanitarian challenges in the camps that are located in one of the driest parts of the Sahara Desert uh, in the side of uh, Algeria. Um, and, but it's not only material needs that they have, they also have very few opportunities for the youth in terms of education, in terms of employment, and this is causing a rise of mental health issues like high rate of depression, frustration, an extended feeling in the whole population of abandonment and isolation, which again is related to mental health problems. Um, in the Sahrawi population is actually in this kind of permanent, but also temporary situation since a long time. And we think astronomy can bring some release from these uh, struggles. So one of the, uh, the aims of the project was of course to work with the children and the youth through inspirational and memorable activities. So they can actually have a sense of temporarily escape from the daily life and the daily uh, uh, needs and struggles and, and conflicts that they are living every day. Uh, and it was a way as well to promote peace and mutual understanding. And as you probably know, so this is very important because there's a actual, an actual confrontation here between, between countries, Morocco and Western Sahara and promoting peace is a very, very important aspect also uh, that is related to, to mental health. And mutual understanding between cultures is something uh, also important in the sense that the Saharawis can feel appreciated but all the people can build these strong personal connections that Armine was actually mentioning before. Um, so this, some of the activities were happening in the camps, the most inspirational, memorable were happening there, but we also did some uh, night sky observations and some kind of uh, fun dynamic um, activities in the Canary Islands in Spain, and we brought the communities, the Spanish children and Sahrawi children, to also uh, a kind of develop this mutual understanding. Something that we also did within the project uh, was to try to empower the community through the uh, knowledge, the very rich knowledge they have on, the, on astronomy and on the sky. They have their own calendar based on different set of constellations and stars. They, they have been using this for many, many centuries. And they have also some kind of legends related to the stars that now it's been, everything has been lost because usually this knowledge was transmitted orally from one generation to another. And now due to the situation in which they find themselves and also the more modern ways of life, uh, of life um, is being lost. So one way to empower the community was try to, to uh, register this knowledge. So let them tell us what uh, the all the knowledge they have and um, to support them somehow in this research project that we are doing jointly together with uh, young and senior researchers in within the camps. So here astronomy is helping also as a coping mechanism and also as a supporting initiative, uh, even regarding some other SDGs like uh, proper employment. But I want to mention some other projects, also most of them also funded by the OED. For example, in Nigeria, there is a very interesting project that works with internally displaced uh, people, especially children as well, 
because the country has seen a dramatic increase of IDP population uh, in the last few years. More than 2 million people are being displaced and most of them are women and children. Um, and they are exposed to all kinds of uh, inequalities, as you can imagine. So this project was tackling especially the young population. They were also organizing motivational activities related to astronomy, and they were even um, building learning hubs within the camps uh, to have like a happen. But the most important thing about this project, and I think this is some a very important example for all other initiatives that want to tackle mental health issues, is that they were working with counselors and mental health professionals uh, together and developing all the contents and all the project together with these professionals, and also leading some uh, behavioral therapy assessments to actually understand what was the situation of the children regarding mental health. And what they found actually is that more than half of them were actually afflicted by severe depression, by anxiety and stress. Uh, so this is actually something that we can expect from many of the camps that are in the country and maybe in other countries as well. And what they were able to measure is that uh, being involved in this kind of activities, educational, and fun activities uh, was able to reduce the reports on these problems, on anxiety, stress, and depression. And this was a pilot, pilot study that we, uh, they did with a smaller sample, but the idea is to continue to, uh, to collect more data in all the camps where they are actually working. There are other examples uh, like using astronomy to support extremely ill, uh, or traumatically injured children and their families. So this is an initiative that has happened in different countries around the world uh, through the Ronald McDonald houses. Um, and this is basically to uh, give opportunities to the families and the ill, uh, Ill children to uh, escape the stress or release from the stress of feeling sick all the time and having a loved one uh, sick or hospitalized. So they were uh, using telescope, they were doing hands-on workshops uh, in the houses or outside, and they were really uh, hoping with the, or helping with the hope, uh, the inspiration and the coping mechanisms. A very similar example, but in another context uh, was astronomy to support uh, students that were affected by an earthquake in Nepal in 2015 that uh, caused many material damages. And, and there were many children that actually needed uh, psychosocial counseling and support. And there were some activities organized around astronomy that the, the students themselves reported that were very good for them in order to help them to forget the extreme fear they had for a, a follow-up or subsequent earthquake. Uh, so the project reached uh, more than 300 students and also family members and teachers in different schools uh, across the most affected districts in Nepal. Uh, also, uh, another initiative, and especially after the pandemic, which Armenia has shown that has now caused this kind of a pandemic only uh, related to mental health is the elderly population. Uh, this is based in Spain, but of course could be uh, extended to any other country because the elderly population have been very, very concerned for uh, their own health uh, during all the pandemic. And they have experienced tremendous fear uh, and anxiety related to being infected by, by the virus. Uh, so now uh, there is an issue initiative in Spain that is trying to organize um, talks about astronomy and also some kind of uh, hands-on uh, workshops, uh, especially for this public, for the elderly population, and in order to help them also to take their minds off this fear and because of the isolation they have been submitted in the past years because they had to actually isolate themselves from everyone from the family, now slowly bring them together as well and reinforce this relationship that is so important also to, to be able to cope with mental health issues. There are other initiatives that are also very interesting and that maybe not tackling directly 
mental health, but they can also actually help a lot because they provide a change in perspective uh, and shifting from a self-interest, but in favor of others' well-being. Uh, and this is what we call the global citizenship. And the Pale Blue Dot project is an example of that. Um, and also to shift uh, the vision to care more about the planet. So somehow uh, uh, having a more environment, environmental sorry, awareness uh, of our uh, planet uh, can also bring hope and inspiration. And it's very important that these aspects are also included when talking about mental health. And I know, uh, I think Michelle uh, uh, Williams is here today. So I hope she can also comment something about this maybe later, but this is a very important initiative that it, I hope we can also uh, develop together with, with the project we are now uh, working on. And just to very, very briefly to uh, let you know where we stand, right now so we have somehow like a timeline for the project we have already accomplished some of the milestones that we wanted which was basically the collection of all the data that was done uh, basically by our mini to really understand the situation on mental health to also uh, review the literature that connects astronomy uh, with mental health and we are seeking more studies and more information so if you have access to them please share them with us and we are now working on a series of surveys uh, to help us also understand a little bit uh, the different communities we want to reach. In fact, um, at our MINE designed an inspiration survey that we would like to share with you uh, for feedback. So I think we will be sharing this in the chat. So if you could take a look, that would be uh, amazing. And maybe our MINE can give you a, a brief introduction on what exactly is the purpose of this survey. Um, and the next step is now reaching out to the world, to the collaborators and partners, and join forces, everybody that wants to actually uh, know more about this topic and start working addressing some of the some of the problems that we see. Uh, and also we plan some deliverables that will come on a later stage, some kind of audiovisual products, resources, uh, activities that we can actually start planning and performing in order to uh, help the people that is more affected by mental health. Um, so we are organizing some pilot activities uh, along this year uh, with refugees, with displaced people, with migrants, with elders, uh, probably in Spain and, Ar and Armenia, of course, because Armenia is based there, I'm based in Spain. But we are also uh, more than happy to collaborate with other people around the world to start moving uh, with the project in different parts of the world. So if you are interested, uh, please drop us an email. This is our email, um, mentalhealth.astrofordev.org. And thank you so much for uh, listening. Thank you so much for coming here. And now we give you the floor.